Hi, this is interior designer Steve Adamco and the producer and host of the Interior Design Beat podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about interior design trends. Is the trend your friend? Well, it all depends on how it ends. Trends could be like fair weather friends, here today, gone tomorrow. Or they could be like friends that last a lifetime. It can all depend on how foundational it is. In other words, is it classic? Does it have its roots in history? Is it a foundational bedrock principle? We want to have things and interiors that last, that are a good investment. Interior design is expensive. It's not like going to the clothing store and buying a new dress or jacket or shirt or whatever that you can easily replace without a lot of expense. In my book, whether you have a lot of money or not is not the issue. It's, is it a good investment? And I don't mean it from a financial point of view. I mean it from a financial point of view plus an emotional point of view and intellectual point of view. You know, it's important. So it should be an investment in more ways than one. In other words, a multifaceted investment. You know, it's funny. Every year, there are new design and fashion trends. Every year. Same thing for the color of the year. Every year, there's a new color of the year. And that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing, depending on how you look at it and whether or not it has substance or not. Let's take fashion, for instance. A trend refers to the styling, colors, materials, and shapes that are popular in a particular season and that might have long-term influence on the market. Interior design trends are very similar to fashion trends because a lot of times they're both inspired by culture and current events. It's been said that trying to discern the direction that the latest trends will be taking and which styles and materials and colors will be most appealing to consumers in the coming season or year is a real challenge for designers and architects and requires a great deal of detailed research and observation. Well, it does require some research and observation, but it also takes some common sense with ideals that are rooted in history, which have long-standing effect or long-standing precedent, so to speak. What designs and whatnot colors and materials have staying power? What are the things that you can depend on year after year? In other words, what's classic? What's tradition? So there's nothing wrong with tradition because tradition has roots, okay? That's very important to have roots or a foundation. So a lot of these trends are dictated by magazines and popular fashion channels. So it's important to have knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and some common sense so that you can navigate all of this change and then figure out what applies to you and what doesn't apply to you, no matter how popular it seems to be. You know, what's funny, there's a lot of things written about by bloggers and whatnot in interior design some maybe are interior designers, some maybe not, but you need to know really what you're talking about. I like to read articles to find out whether or not the people who wrote them really know what they're talking about. Recently, I came across an article that said this, an interior design trend is a central idea around which all the elements of a project are designed. It is a thread that binds together all the design elements and gives central character to the whole project. Well, they misspoke here. That's not an interior design trend. That's an interior design concept. Having a concept will keep you out of a lot of trouble, but it's knowing what to look at, what to think about, what to keep in, what to keep out. It's kind of like editing your thought process. It's also determining what you want from a particular environment. Before I get deep into this discussion, we should probably talk about why you might want to avoid following the latest trends in interior design. It seems like trends pop up every day. The newest this, the newest that. A lot of times people can feel like keeping up 
with the latest trends can feel overwhelming. Well, there's no reason to really try to keep up with them in a sense. So I've got two ways of doing this. I could say written and then read what was written and then say my response. And then I give my response. Or I could be doing it in my voice that I'm using right now and then put an effect on my voice like reverb or some other effect that could distinguish or that would distinguish my response from what is written. So that remains to be seen which one I'm going to use, but I'll probably do it both ways just to cover myself here. Written. Sometimes it feels like new trends are surfacing every day. Trying to keep up on the latest trends can feel overwhelming, but we are often drawn to it. This might include completely reworking our interior spaces to feature a different design style. My response, well, that can get very expensive and this isn't just changing your outfit. You know, many people have closets that have lots of clothes in them and they have maybe an outfit for every day of the year. But can you really afford to do that with your house? Like change it every year to reflect a new design style or trend. Also, if you do that, it means you don't really know who you are. You haven't defined what it is that you want to promote in your own home. So you haven't thought about it that deeply. Like, what do I want this house to look like? What do I want it to feel like? You see, in the discovery phase, the discovery phase of a project, it's all about asking the right questions to get the right answers and then deliver the right results. So a lot of times people aren't asking the right questions. They're just looking at things in a magazine saying, oh, I like this, and not realizing how it all goes together or how it orchestrates. So it's ridiculous to just jump on an aspect without realizing how it affects everything else. One thing that most people need to be aware of is that trends tend to expire, just like medication. Okay, so don't get your meds on the new design style, so to speak. Don't get your fix, so to speak, on a new design style. Don't get all hyped up and excited on every new design style that comes down the pike. Look at it as it integrates with your personality and your lifestyle. Also, trends are cookie cutter. <laughs> They're a cookie cutter approach. You want to be unique. You're a unique person. You're not a person who's a trend, are you? No, you're not. Trends are cookie cutter. In other words, they're not unique. You're unique, and so your design should be unique. And another thing, your personality is not a trend, is it? Then why should you follow the trends? You're a person. You have wants, needs, desires, things that excite you. Those should be the things that are in your home. You know, with so many homes in many places looking so similar, you go through a particular development, and it depends on the price point of the homes in the development. The more high priced things are, the more unique and different the homes are. But in other cases, you know, the homes look so much the same that it's kind of boring. Well, your only differentiator is for you to have a different look in your home, a different feel, a different ambiance. And, you know, don't be afraid to be yourself. A lot of people lack the courage to be themselves. They're concerned about what somebody is going to think. Their friends, their girlfriends, their neighbor. You know, what do they think? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's your money. Spend it the way you want it. Spend it the way you want to. Another thing is keeping up with the trend can be hard. Maybe the trend lasts a month maybe a year, maybe two years. And then what happens after that? Everything about the trend that you incorporated in your home is now ugh, out of style, expired. So as you well can imagine, this can be frustrating, time consuming, and costly. <laughs> One person said, instead, you will want to focus on other ways that you can properly decorate your house. Well, again, you know, decorating is an important part of 
your home, but you're not really decorating your home in a sense. You are, and then you're not, but it's an expression of you. I mean, you can like certain styles, obviously, but personalize them so they're unique to you, unique to your personality. Now, someone wrote, find your signature style. Finding a style that you enjoy can be difficult work, and it may take some trial and error. Well, again, who's got time for trial and error? Okay, as long as it doesn't cost you money, I guess it's okay. While a trend might be immediately appealing, the feeling can soon wear off. It's important to find design aspects that you are happy with and that you feel can last for the long term. Speaking with a professional may be able to help you hone in on your unique style. Hey, that's the deal right there. You've got to find a real professional. Just because they call themselves an interior designer doesn't mean a hill of beans. A lot of times they're not that good or they design with their own particular style. They design with what they like. Okay. I mean, in many states, there's no, well, I guess laws don't really make a difference, do they? Uh, Whether you have uh, Interior Design Practice Act or an Interior Design Title Act, I guess it doesn't matter because you'll get the good, bad, and the ugly in every profession. Even in law, you got to have a law degree, but there are some really good lawyers, some mediocre lawyers, and some really bad ones. Obviously, stay away from them. Stay away from bad and mediocre, okay? Just, you got to stick with people who are excellent and who know how to integrate all the different aspects of interior design, which means architecture and furnishings and furniture. So architecture, furniture, furnishings, everything. It's a complete piece of music, as it were. It's an orchestration. And if you're going to deal with somebody, deal with somebody who is a masterful orchestrator. And don't just go by what you heard. Oh, somebody says this, they're fantastic. Well, how do you know? If you don't know much, your friend may not know much and they think they're wonderful. It's like, no, they're not wonderful. Okay. So get a clue there. I've seen this happen before. Trust me, it is a pain in the butt. Somebody gets somebody that they think were wonderful. And then it's like, well, they didn't do this. They didn't do that. It's like, obviously they were not highly professional. They were not masterful. They did not have a handle on interior design and architecture as a hand and glove scenario and they screwed up. Okay. I've been called on jobs like that after the fact. I wish I would have gotten them from the beginning because then we could have used that money to invest in doing it right. I'm a big proponent on do it right once the first time or do it in such a way that you can add things in later on as more money becomes available, as the budget increases, and things of that nature. And in one of these articles, the person wrote, hire a professional residential home designer. Do I agree with that? Yes. The interior design industry brings in around $10 billion annually. That's true, but who really cares? Does the client really care about how much it brings in annually? No. If you want to find your unique design style and learn how to incorporate into your home, hiring a professional home designer is a great option. Well, of course it's a great option. But again, you need to know how to pick the right one. Then it says your home designer can help walk you through every process and help you choose the pieces that you can have in your home for years to come. Again, you've got to have a great interior designer. Okay. And watch out for store designers. Nothing wrong with that, but you're going to have a store look. It's like, oh, you got all from whatever. Okay, I could use some names here, but it gives that decorated look, not a designed look. Okay, really, it's all about design, not decoration. Decoration is a part of design, but a lot of times decoration is really not to be equated with design. Okay. Auto manufacturers design cars. They don't decorate cars. Same thing should hold true for residential interior design. We're designing architecture. We're designing interiors. We're designing a comprehensive interior that relates to the architecture. We're designing something that's comprehensive, that's orchestrated and in tune with the people that live there. So it's an extension of them and their personality and the things they like and what's important to them. 
This takes a lot of delving in and asking the right questions. It takes a lot of quote unquote research. It takes some asking the questions. It, that's the hard work, okay? The prep work, all the stuff up front that you have to do to create a wonderful environment, okay? It's all the prep work, just like painting. You know, you've got to sand, you've got to prime, you've got to do all this stuff. It's a lot of work. The painting is the easy part, relatively speaking, as far as time and effort. It's getting everything prepared, okay? Here's my six Ps. Prior, proper, preparation prevents poor performance. That'll help you out in a lot of places. Since I like fashion and interior design, I like to go through magazines like Vogue and Architectural Digest and other high-end fashion and design magazines just to see what people are saying. And they'll interview top designers or well-known designers. And some things I agree with what they're saying and others I don't agree with what they're saying. So to have a little fun here and go back and forth, uh, there's some things that were asked of certain designers that I can um, make mention of and then I can reply to it. So it's kind of like a conversation back and forth. And I was looking at the interior design trends to know in 2021 and 2022 because it kind of, <laughs> everything's kind of merged together, you know. So might as well look at them kind of uh, back to back in a way and also next to each other and see what carries over and what doesn't carry over and what is, hey, obvious or something that's been around for a long time. Like somebody saying that, you know, green is back in. Well, green's always been in. I look around at nature and Green's a backdrop for everything. Green leaves, blue sky, okay? You look at nature. Look at what God designed, okay? It's been here from everlasting to everlasting, okay? So it's not a trend, okay? So it's funny how some people talk, and I'm thinking the way some designers talk, is like, duh. I mean, we all know that. We've been knowing that. That makes common sense. Hello? A lot of these fashion and design magazines will interview these designers. And obviously, I'm sure the interview is more extensive. And then they'll take snippets out of that interview and then put it in an article. So I like to read what people are saying. And then, you know, obviously here in the podcast, I'll respond to what is said either in an affirmation way or like, hello, we've been knowing that. Or, yeah, I don't really believe that or I believe that, but that's been that way for centuries or millennia. So anyway, it should be kind of fun and interesting. So with all that's been going on in the world, they were talking about homes used to be a part of our lives because time was spent traveling to work, at work, going someplace after work. And so most people weren't at home. And now that's all changed and more people are spending more time at home, either socializing or exercising or working and that people are adjusting to the spaces that they live in. So one of the top fashion magazines asked several top designers what home trends they're likely to see, and in this case, it was 2021. Now, remember, I'm kind of merging 2021 and 2022 together because we just came out of 2021, and we're only, as the date of this recording, February, we're just getting into 2022. So we're going to take a look in the past, the recent past, and the future. So one of the things that came up, words that dominated the conversation, was comfort. So Martin Lawrence Bullard said, comfort, practicality, and making your home your sanctuary on every level. Well, that's important. That should be the case with every design. So yes, I wholeheartedly agree. Timothy Corrigan said, comfort in all forms is becoming more paramount. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Another interior designer who I don't know said comfort over concept. Well, I think comfort and concept both go together. You have to have a concept in design, and that includes comfort. Okay, so why would you say comfort over concept? You've got to have a concept. You've got to have a design plan, a design impetus, a design thrust for everything that you're doing. And they ask, what does comfy look like exactly? And some designers said, well, they're giving certain 
aspects like plushy sink into furniture, chestnut woods, warm colors, overflowing bookcases, things that they think are comfy. But everybody's got a different comfy definition. And so when I'm working with people, it's like, okay, what, what does that mean? What does comfort mean to you? What does elegance mean to you? What does casual mean to you? Okay, these are all important that we personalize these words and not just take them as, you know, words that have generalized meaning, like rustic. I mean, rustic to some is not the same rustic to other people. Kind of like camping. People say, I like to rough it. And they really mean roughing it. Like going out there where it's just a pup tent and a fire and no porta potty or no outdoor john or outdoor bathroom or anything like that. Other people think, well, roughing it for me is staying at a five star hotel. <laughs> so you've got all these variations that you're dealing with. That's why I say it's so much more fun to be personal and unique and honed in and focused. That's where design becomes really satisfying and the most fun as a journey and an end result. Kathy Ireland talked about less mass-produced furniture and more reworking of passed down family pieces or ones you already own. She says there's nothing more thrilling than giving new life to ancestral pieces. Well, I agree. I mean, there's something that's unique, you know, antiques or whatever, giving them a, a new fresh look, giving them a new tactile sensibility with fabric, like say tapestry or something that's a rich textured fabric that brings a more tactile sense to it that engages you more. I mean, there's all kinds of wonderful opportunities with that. Another designer said uh, furniture and accessories from local artisans rather than e-commerce giants. Well, I agree with that too. That gives a very unique sensibility instead of something that everybody else can buy that doesn't have an engaging aspect to it. He said, the trend is to embrace what lasts, what's well-made, and what makes you smile. Well, I don't think that's a trend. I think that's a very solid way to think about things. Embrace what lasts, what's well-made. I mean, that makes anybody smile. Something that's well-made, I mean, cheap stuff doesn't make you smile, does it? I don't think so. So yeah, I agree with that. Let's do the well-made stuff. Now, another topic they were talking about is 24-7 livability. So Timothy Corrigan says, while the mid-century look was very popular, now that people are actually hanging out in their living spaces for hours at a time, there's a strong trend towards furniture that's big on soft, comfy sofas and chairs that allow you to lounge with ease. Oh, that's a great idea, great look, great feeling. But then again, a lot of people, older people, Baby boomers may need seating that offers more support, soft but firm. You know, so there's all kinds of things that one needs to take into consideration, especially with seating pieces. You know, the proper depth, the proper firmness, the proper support, back support. I mean, there's a lot of things that look cool, but you don't enjoy sitting on them or in them for extended periods of time without getting up and saying, wow, you know, my back muscles feel tight and tense. I mean, so look, comfort, all this is important. In some cases, you might have a chair that just, hey, it just looks cool. All right. Nothing wrong with that. But as often as possible, make everything usable, functional. You can sit on it short term or long term. Another designer says, I think minimalism will begin to go by the wayside in 2021. And he says, as we spend more time in our homes, we need more objects to hold our attention. All that empty space can be suffocating. Really? So we need uh, objects to hold our attention? What about people? What about other things? It's kind of weird. Anyway, sometimes these comments are kind of weird off the wall, even though some of these designers are really good at what they do. Some of them seem a little weird. Here's another comment. Back off all that beige. Kathy Ireland said the all beige catalog look is out. She says, be bold and decorate with conviction. That's great. I like that. Be bold and decorate with conviction. Be bold and design with conviction. Yeah, but the all beige thing is like, oh my gosh, could you imagine if God created the world in beige? Oh my gosh, we'd be freaking out. 
Another designer said, I'd say that 2021 will be a year of attributing meaning to carefully selected pieces. The year of the craftsperson, the artist, the artisan. Well, I agree with that because I think this is the same person that said, we need more objects to hold our attention. All that empty space can be suffocating. You know, you have pieces that are meaningful, that have a shape, form, proportion, color, texture that can hold your attention. Kathy Ireland said, real decorating is back in. Colors, textures, a mix of old and new. Repurpose things, shuffle artwork around, move furniture to another room, reaccessorize what you have rather than starting over. Keep the pieces that have meaning. Well, I agree with all that. That's important. But hey, I didn't know real decorating was back in. I thought real decorating was in all the time. It's been that way for hundreds of years. Those are the comments that were relative to 2021. Now let's see if we have any carryover and what is new for 2022. Okay, let's get on to 2022. So Timothy Corrigan tells Vogue, there is more and more research that shows the direct influence that our homes have, not only on our moods, but our overall health and well-being. Well, that is definitely true. And the research and the insight has proven that to be true over many years. So Vogue says, so was there any wonder that in 2022, our third consecutive year in a global pandemic, the top interior design trends are again focused on making us feel emotionally at ease. Well, again, feeling emotionally at ease is very important. And it's been that way for a long time and should be that way all the time. It's one of those givens. So yes, in my book, interior design should impact you positively, emotionally, intellectually, visually, tactily, should be very engaging and supportive of the individuals that live there. Another individual designer says, we have been forced to slow down and spend time in our homes. This drives a strong desire to really create a space that reflects both visually and affectionately what it is we are feeling. Well, I agree with that as well. Because when I'm dealing with clients, I always ask them, what do you want this room, this house to feel like? Yes, what it looks like is important, but what's the end result? The feeling, it's like music. That's why they put certain music in certain parts of a movie to emphasize and embrace that emotion that's happening at the time in the movie. So important. So in my book, it's all about creating the ambiance or the ambience, if you prefer, French or English pronunciation. So you're looking for ambiance, ambience, depth, soul, and visual intrigue, just to name a few, but that's not all there is. Texture is also a very important element. The tactile aspect of interior design, the touchy feely part. You could also say the sensual part. Martin Lawrence Bullard said more gracious and sensual shapes curved edges and deep, luxuriant seats. I can definitely agree with that. It's all about form, shape, proportion, color, texture. That reminds me of the idea of patina. You know, the look of something that's been weathered, that whether it be bronze, whether it be the patina of stained glass windows in a cathedral, It's very similar to movies where they have this overall feeling, you know, when you can see things that look like, you know, when you look at something, you can tell if it's a video or it's a movie. It just has a particular look and feel about it. In the film industry, it's called LUTS, L-U-T, or LUTS, plural. It stands for look up table. So it's a tool that lets filmmakers save particular color grades as a template. So it's kind of like a preset color template that they can turn to. So it's kind of, again, like a patina, like a film, like a certain look. Like if you take a video that's too fresh and clean and crisp, it just doesn't, and you do it, let's say, from the Civil War, it won't look right. It's got to have that older look to the film. It's got to look like it was done in that, time and era. 
So these are all important elements to creating that wonderful look. And of course, a lot of that comes right down to lighting and how an interior is lit, like in film, like in theater. All of this is part and parcel of great interior design. And it has to be figured into it from the beginning. So again, the concept is the concept. It's the starting point for all good design. Timothy Corrigan says the desire to have unique things that are not like everyone else's is leading to an increase in mixing materials and furniture design. It's not uncommon to see case goods with wood, metal, and stone elements all used in the same piece to make them more unique and special. Well, marquetry, inlay, and all that has been done for hundreds of years. You go back to the French periods. A lot of that is part and parcel what makes those interiors look so rich and unique and captivating. Another designer says, I believe we will see a move away from neutrals and people will be using more vibrant colors. Well, I agree with that. I mean, you look at history, the Parthenon, Roman antiquities, you see them as they are today as just like, you know, marble, travertine and things of that nature. But a lot of these edifices were brightly colored. And of course, that has faded and gone away over the centuries. But you have to look at it as it was. I mean, well, you can go back to Pompeii. Look at the interior design in Pompeii. And it was covered by the eruption of Vesuvius. You'll see a lot of richness of color in there. So they were not afraid of color. I mean, today, if people are like, why are you so afraid of color? You know, if you're that afraid of color, maybe you should have your garden outside. You'd just be all beige and brown flowers. Of course, that wouldn't look very good, would it? I mean, what would you prefer, colorful or boring? You can apply that to people. As he has a colorful, she has a colorful personality. Or, my gosh, they're so boring. Can't stand to be around them. Yep. Like Timothy Corrigan said in another statement, the years of dull and muted colors have given away to bright, joyful colors that put a smile on your face. Yes, that's what we're talking about. And Timothy Corrigan also said, relative to open floor plans, that open floor plans will give way to more segmented and traditional spaces, delineations, as we have come to realize the need for privacy and quiet spaces. Well, hello. Yes, absolutely. I mean, open plans are great. They're all inclusive. But there's also some greatness to traditional spaces that are more compartmentalized like a lot of the great buildings of the past. And you can do separate things. You can transition. I mean, look at Versailles. A lot of large spaces, but each room is different and helpful for different activities. And in the past, people have said, well, we'll see more curved lines. We'll see more straight lines. Well, most things are a combination of curved and straight lines with everything in between. You can go very severe straight line to very vivacious with the curve line to anything in between. It's just like a rheostat, a dimmer for lighting. You can get everything you want and everything in between. And that's the way it should be. We shouldn't have these trends where, yeah, this is in, this is out. We should be able to get whatever it is we want at any time. I mean, we are living in the most fruitful time of the availability used to be, you know, white was all you could get in terms of appliances or bathroom fixtures. And then when the Model T came out, you could get any color you wanted as long as it was black. So black was it for cars, white for appliances and um, bathroom fixtures. But now there's no excuse for not getting what you want anytime you want. And with our world being so international, you can get everything from anywhere. You should be able to get anything at any time. Like for instance, I went through a time where tapestries were available and now you can't hardly find them. It's like that gives such a richness and a warmth and a tactile involvement with furniture and fabrics. And it's been part and parcel of furniture movements and styles for hundreds of years. Going back to Versailles, I mean, my gosh, that that is just rich as all get out. And then if you want a traditional interior, I mean, that's a great fabric to employ. So it all gets back to these interior design trends. 
And is the trend your friend? Well, that depends on how it ends. I mean, you can go over the cliff with a trend, and most of the times you do, unless what you're doing is based on foundational principles of interior design and color theory and form and shape and proportion and texture, like the orders of architecture, like a classic Corinthian ionic Doric column. They have certain form, shape, and proportions that have been recognized for years as being the epitome of that particular style. So don't get so wrapped up into these trends and whatnot. Look at your own lifestyle. How do you want to live? What do you want things to look like? What do you want things to feel like? Nail that down. Tighten that up. And you'll go a lot farther and be a lot happier.